Hey everyone, this is just a small little update for the copper wiring data pack. This is technically beta 5, but it's a really small one. Uh, there's just a few balance changes mostly concerned with the Tesla over there, which I'll be getting into in just a few minutes. But luckily, I'm going to be showing off another project I've been working on, so there's a little more to watch in this video. So stick around for that if you want to see it. To quickly speed through all the changes that have been made not regarding the Tesla, wires will now specifically deal 1 damage when you touch them, and wires that are in water will deal 2 damage and wires out of water can be prevented with the damage using leather armor. And relating to metal armor, as I said in the previous video, netherite's been included, but you also need a full set of metal armor on all four armor slots to prevent damage with the wire and also the Tesla. And on a completely separate note, the namespaces in the data pack have been unified under one sort of system, so it's a little more programmer friendly. It makes it easier for me to do updates and modify as well as you guys to modify if you want to tweak this data pack to your liking. But that does mean that there are a bunch of new scoreboards and variables, so if you want to remove the old ones, I added a function for that. You just have to do function and remove old systems, which will remove all the old scoreboards. Anyway, moving on to the Tesla, we've got quite a bit of changes for this thing, mostly making it a lot more powerful. You'll notice right away, uh, first of all, it's got a sound effect, and it's not the most pleasant one. There isn't really a good sound effect. This is just a decent enough one. But if this sound is pretty annoying for you, which understandably so, you can go into the sound settings and mute environment ambient, and that will turn it off completely. Another thing you might have noticed is that this isn't attacking me as frequently. I've turned the frequency down to just once per second, and I also increased the damage a little bit, so it deals now four damage per second, where previously it did three. This doesn't sound like a huge improvement. However, it can now kill the player and most other entities effectively two seconds quicker. So if I go into survival here, you can see it actually deals two hearts of damage. Granted, I'm regenerating a little bit, but it is killing me a lot faster, and that's true for every mob. Another thing is that the radius that this can hit you is also much further now. It's 7.5 blocks as opposed to the previous 5. And also to up the fear factor and lethality of this thing a little more, it can actually hit you when you're not grounded, as you saw earlier. You can be flying because I did some research on actual Tesla coils. Turns out they could just hit you in the air. And similarly, leather armor, or at least leather boots, will no longer protect you from these things because they can also shock you even if you are not grounded. So just keep that in mind that leather armor no longer works for these things, just the wire specifically. But that's not all, as if there is water that the Tesla coil reaches before it reaches you, it'll actually deal damage to all mobs within a two and a half block radius of where it impacts. So for instance, if I'm in here, that didn't even come close to hitting me, but it's still damaging me for the same four damage. And something else, apparently Tesla coils don't actually work underwater at all, like I previously thought. So the functionality of this thing being submerged in water has been removed. Now, as far as new changes go, there are only a couple. One of them is that, as I said, the capacitor now works with it. So how this will work is it will be able to uh, draw the amount of power from the capacitor based on its usage. For instance, if I were to get out of range, since this isn't shocking me, it's able to charge all the way up. And when it does that, that means it can shock multiple targets at once. So for example, if I have a bunch of targets, it will shock as many of them as it can. This one I think is a little too far away. And so I figured a better example would be filling a larger capacity capacitor or one that charges and discharges more slowly. Because if I place a bunch of these, you can see that it will shock a bunch of them, as many as it can get a hold of, and it will draw the equivalent power. And then when there isn't enough power, it'll just shock less or down to just one per second. And the last change slash addition I made for this is that it can now trigger the lightning effect uh, for applicable mobs. This doesn't just summon lightning itself, at least not with these mobs, but I'll get into that later. So for example, uh, with a villager, if I spawn one in, it actually has a 20% chance to turn into a witch when it is shocked by this thing. And same thing goes for a pig turning into a zombified piglin. And of course, mushrooms will have that 20% chance to be turned into the other variant, and it'll play the appropriate sound effect. And creepers will have a 20% chance to become charged, and charged creepers will have a 20% chance to become primed and ready to explode. And I decided to add a little lightning effect, and that is with iron golems, they'll have a chance to become glowing, and they will be uh, twice as fast with movement speed. So, yeah, pretty dangerous. And this glowing and speed effect will last for one minute from the point they got shocked. Now the last change I made is that tridents are now targetable by the Tesla, which doesn't do anything by itself. However, if you enchant them with channeling, then this actually gives them a 20% chance to summon lightning, as you can see. And that also means you can use this for copper wiring related things to 
create some lightning and have it chain together with machines. Now that's as far as copper wiring goes, but as I said at the beginning, there are more things I want to show off. One of them is this uh, little mini data pack idea I've been working on that has some right click functions to certain blocks with certain items that would otherwise be craftable. And I think it actually works really well as a quality of life thing in the game. So for example, if you have a slime ball, you can actually right click a piston directly to turn it into a sticky piston and you can use shears to take off the slime. Well, I was gonna say you can shift right click to put uh, chests and other items in minecarts and chests into boats, but uh, for some reason it's not working. But here's a video on screen of this working. This was a long time ago. I made this probably weeks ago. I just simply haven't developed it further because I've been focusing on copper wiring and a couple other ideas. Anyways, one other idea I made, uh, I might not incorporate it because it seems a bit powerful, but you can use a lava bucket on netherrack to turn it into a magma block. And similarly, you can use a bucket on a magma block to turn it back into netherrack and get the lava out of it. That makes some really convenient lava storage since you can stack those blocks to 64. Uh, I don't know if I want to include that. I just thought it was a fun idea and a lot of these like interactable blocks are really easy to put together because I do want to expand this to be something that's really interesting and really cool. All right, I'm up here now and the reason being, uh, if you have seen a previous devlog video I made, I included some changes I made to the Elytra and I've been working on that one a little bit as well. So for starters, if you were to jump off a cliff for instance and fly with your Elytra, you won't immediately see anything and that's because the GUI has been a little more minimalized, a little more hidden. If you crouch to flap your wings, then you'll see this dark bar appear. And when it's fully charged and you're able to fly and flap your wings again, then it'll actually disappear. So it's not as much in your face and a lot darker. And so as you can see, I can still flap with this. I made the flapping a little more uniform in the game, so it's a little bit better and gives you a little more height. So my plan is to incorporate that ability of the Elytra into an enchantment that gives the Elytra its own enchantment since you can do that now. But honestly, it doesn't sit right with me just to buff the most powerful mode of transportation. So I'm actually going to be nerfing its out-of-the-box experience. I'm going to half the duration that the firework rockets give you in flight. All right, now that we've lost about 90% of the people who were watching this video previously, let me explain. Personally, I feel like for a firework rocket being as small and as easy to craft as it is, it propels you way too far. And I was going to decrease the speed since that would make a little more sense, but you can't actually do that. So instead the duration is half. So this is a flight duration three. And as you can see, it lasts only about half as long as it previously did. Now this may seem like a really heavy nerf because you know, fireworks and elytra boosting are kind of like a quintessential part of using elytras. But with the new enchantment, if you actually get this enchantment to flap your wings, then with that and the half duration fireworks, it's actually more powerful than the previous full duration fireworks without the wing flapping. And that's simply because the firework can now be used just to give you a bunch of speed, which means it actually doesn't matter as much if you have a duration three or say a duration two or one. So that actually saves you some gunpowder. Uh, and you don't need to carry as many fireworks because you don't need them as much. So for instance, I'm just going to have my F3 menu on. This green coordinate right here is my Y coordinate. That's my height. And using the right timing and skills, you can actually get enough velocity that with the flapping alone, you can actually get most of your height back. As you can see, I'm actually getting a little higher than I originally was. And that's just due to proper timing and proper speed management. Meaning your jumping off point, such as a cliff or what I have here, can actually be a lot lower than the point you end at. So although this does seem like a big nerf, it actually is a buff to the Elytra when you have the enchantment. And best of all, it requires skill to be good at it. You can't just simply hope to get more height. You actually have to use skill to be able to uh, use it properly. And I think that's actually a really good idea because not just is the Elytra very overpowered, but it's also way too easy to use. So I think this is honestly a really good change. So I don't want to excite you guys too much, and I know this video is getting a bit long, but the plan is that I want to incorporate those two data pack ideas I've showed you, as well as a few others that I have and haven't been working on, into a new like big data pack, and that's going to be my next project. The plan is to make it very survival and quality of life oriented, and so a lot of these experiments here that I have laying around incorporate that. For instance, I'm thinking of making the fletching table finally useful. Although you can't give it a GUI that you can access by right clicking, you can possibly incorporate some ability for say like a potion to be put on it to make uh, tipped arrows 
without having to use lingering potions. I've got some other ideas too, but I think that's going to be incorporated into another video where I show off the main idea I've been working on for the last two weeks and why this video took so long to get out. Now, because I'm going to be shifting my focus to this new data pack idea, copper wiring is going to be kind of put off to the side right now. There aren't any big new plans I have for it as far as updates and content, and I've gotten a bit burned out if I were to be honest. So uh, the plan is I'm just going to put it off to the side and work on this next data pack for the time being. Anyways, that's about all I've got for you in this video. So feel free to leave a like and then go ahead and click on that next one. Thanks for watching.